Hey what's up guys so in this video I'm going to show you how you can create these metallic gold or kind of like a glitter style textures inside Affinity Photo. Now I'm going to generate these textures from scratch so if you are interested in that let's get started. So guys here inside Affinity Photo I'm just going to create a new document and the size that I would recommend would should be square size document it doesn't matter what is the pixel size so i'm just using 2000 by 2000 pixels and 300 dpi because i want to use it for my t-shirt designs maybe or kdp or any other kind of like a print on demand thing so i'm just going to press create and it has created a new document first we are going to create a new fill layer so i'm going to go to the layer then choose this option new fill layer then I'm going to change its color from white to kind of like a grayish. So at the top next to the type solid we are going to click this white button and move this slider slightly like that. So if you are not seeing this HSL sliders you can select it from the top here in this drop down menu. You can use any of these sliders just make sure it is kind of like a slightly grayish thing. Then in the layers panel I'm just going to right click and choose this option rasterize and trim next i am going to apply some filters here so there are two uh, type of filters the first thing is at the top in this uh, you know in this menu you can see this filter drop down menu and there are different filters another way to apply filter is the live filters and that is available here in the layers panel so towards the bottom of the layer panel you will see this icon that if you hover your cursor over it you will see that it you know just gives you a tooltip called live filters so you can apply a filter either from that top filters menu or the live filters but for this video i'm just going to apply a live filter here because the thing about live filter is that you can change its features once you have applied it and uh, if you do not like it you can slightly modify it but if you apply the filters from the top menu the, that filter is a destructive filter so once applied and if you are you know considering to change some setting you have to redo the everything so that's why i'm going to apply the live filter here and the filter that i'm interested in is here at the, towards the bottom that is called procedural texture so i'm just going to click it it opens up a new window and in this window i'm going to use one of the prefix sets here from dot drop down menu i'm just going to go to uh, towards the bottom scroll down here and i'm choose this option called ripples so in the ripples we have different settings so on this uh, you know document here you can see it how it looks currently so it has different uh, settings the square count and the turbulence turbulence simply means how you know can say that deviant it is from the simple square looks so in you, if your slider is at the middle it is kind of like a square style you know kind of like you see those uh, qr codes so that kind of look so i do not want this kind of look so i'm just going to move my turbulence slider to the extreme here and in the square count we need some kind of a high number so 400 500 something like that and you know as i have chosen the 2000 by 2000 pixels so i have found the what the one number that works fine here that would be about 400 and now you can see that it has made our document uh, those size of those design elements to be too small so if i just close it so at the top you have two options merge delete reset and close so reset obviously means that all the settings will uh, go back to the default delete means that you do not want to apply this texture or actually you do not want to apply this filter merge means that it applies that filter but you will not be able to you can say that edit it in the future so instead of merge delete or anything i'm just going to close at the top and our filter is already in this here which is live filter and we can edit it in the future now if i choose the hand tool and zoom it to the 100 percent you see we kind of like get this kind of texture look and this size is something that i like it for uh, this kind of texture now it is a monochrome texture the next thing is simply i wanted to make it kind of like a gold color so again i'm going to go into the layers panel towards the bottom i'm choosing this adjustment icon and i'm going to apply a you know adjustment layer that is called three color 
so in the real color already you can see that it has given us this gold uh, not the gold but a red glitter style look but i want it to be slightly gold somewhat like here and we can adjust the saturation slightly a little bit like that you can adjust the lightness and um, you know according to your likeness depending upon what you like so slight adjustment in lightness would be fine here as well i think i like uh, this one somewhat around here would be fine then um, instead of merge delete or reset i'm just simply going to close it and I just zoom in to 100% and now it's looking kind of like a gold style thing but we are not done here yet. there is still a little bit extra step here that I want you to see so if you are uh, happy with this kind of texture you can simply save it as PNG image and use it for your designs but if you want to you know just bring uh, you know just a little bit extra kind of look to it this is the next step that you need to do so at the top in the layers panel i'm going to go to the layers and choose this option merge visible or you can use this shortcut if you remember it and it has created a new layer with this one already merging to a single layer next i'm going to go to the filter and the colors and i'm choose, going to choose this option emboss so in the emboss i'm going to just you know increase the radius amount like that and uh, before i do that let me just cancel it and let me just zoom in to 100 percent because i want to see how it is supplying so that filter is best applied when you are zoomed in to 100 percent so i'm going to go to the filters colors and boss and now i'm going to increase the radius slider so you do not want to increase the radius to be too extreme you just want it to be something that would just define the texture look to it i'm going to increase the amount a bit too as well and i'm going to check this box monochrome because i want it to be monochrome no colors in it and then i'm just going to you know find a place where my radius slider gives me that desired look that i want i think it uh, gives me look somewhat like that i think that looks fine here yeah i think that looks fine then i'm just going to press apply by the way this uh, rotation slider is just going to affect the lighting how it affects it you can see here inside your preview and if you want to change its angle you can easily change it depending upon what you like so i'm just going to apply it here like this next i'm going to change its blend mode in the layers panel from normal to any of the blend modes that works so you can test out different blend modes depending upon what uh, you like and what kind of effect it gives but i find it to be you know this overlay mode to be useful and this linear light mode to be useful so overlay mode kind of gives you this kind of look slightly highlights in it so if i hide this one you can see this was the original one and this is with the emboss filter applied with overlay blend mode now if i change it to let's say linear light it kind of gives like uh, give you extreme highlights these extreme white areas so this was the original and this is the extreme highlight and in order to decrease this one you can you just decrease the opacity what i would recommend is just bring it to zero percent and then slightly improve it and see which setting do you like so if i like it 46 40 something i think that would be good so if i hide it this is the original look and now this is with the emboss look now when you are zoomed in here it's kind of giving you that rough gold style look to you and uh, that is something that you might uh, are okay with it and if you are not okay with this uh, size of the grain all you have to do is just hide this layer or delete this layer on which you have applied that emboss filter and then simply change the procedural texture and change its number to less number so maybe 300 200 whatever you like that totally depends upon you so i like this one and i'm kind of liking this kind of look to it it is when i'm zoomed out it is kind of giving me that uh, you can say that glittery look to it as well and when i'm zoomed in to 100 percent it is giving me that kind of like a gold style look to it rough gold style look not that shiny polished gold look 
so that is one improvement that you can do and you can use it for your designs another slight improvement uh, that you can do or you can say slight variation that you can do in this kind of texture is uh, let me show you what I mean so again I'm going to select the top layer and go to the layers and choose another merge uh, layer option this merge visible to create another merge layer so in that merge layer I'm going to apply another texture actually, actually another filter so again I can apply this live filter so I'm going to go to this one live filter and I'm choose, going to choose this option diffuse so what diffuse does it kind of gives you kind of like a noise look to it so it can give you slightly so if I apply just one percent diffuse so it is going to give you this kind of blurred noise style look so if you are into that you can create this kind of texture as well so let me just close it and zoom in to fit it so this is the look that you can get slightly different just small amount and you can get that look and, but I like this kind of look so I'm just going to delete this diffuse layer simply delete it another kind of look that you can get in these textures is again I'm going to go to the live filters and choose this option dust and scratches so in dust and scratches if I increase the tolerance a bit and then increase the radius a bit as well somewhat like that and then play with the tolerance amount depending upon what kind of look I'm getting so if I just leave tolerance here and increase the radius a bit let me just bring down the tolerance yeah I this is what I meant somewhat like here and then play with the tall uh, radius amount yeah that's what I meant so if I just close it and this is what uh, the look that you get with this dust and scratches so if I just hide it it gives you this rough look let me zoom in to 100% this is the original look and with dust and scratches it kind of gives you a little bit mellow look for your texture you know this kind of effect so if you are into that you can create this kind of effect as well so guys this was about uh, this texture now if you want to change the color rate you do not want it to this gold style look let me just delete this dust and scratches because it's uh, getting heavy on my computer system anyway so if you want to change its color that is easy you can either uh, change the color at the beginning this recolor adjustment layer or at the top you can apply a hue saturation adjustment so go to the adjustment icon and apply an HSLR this adjustment layer and change this hue shift according to your likeness so let me just zoom in so whatever color you want you can easily select it let me choose let's say I want it to be kind of like a red look to it so wherever I see fit I will leave it so I increase the saturation amount and uh, let's say I want it to be kind of pinkish let's say pink is looking fine so I want it to be pink so that's how I can easily change its color to whatever I want something like that so if you do not want to apply this hue saturation adjustment another thing that you can do is go to the adjustment and choose this option curves now it gives you a little bit more control over the colors so the first thing I am going to do is just increase the brightness and bring the shadows or you know dark areas to this red line then towards the bottom instead of the master I am going to choose this red one and increase the red color so if I want to bring the red color I am just going to increase this bring this curve in this upper area and in the green one I'm just going to decrease it a little bit somewhat like that and then in the blue in the blue curve I'm just going to see what kind of color I'm getting so somewhat like that so if you are into that kind of look you are you know just want to test how it looks in different uh, with different settings with different curves areas you can you know just play with it to get a unique look and unique color that you would not be able to you know just get it with that uh, you can say that HSL slider looks so that was the original and that is after the 
Carl's adjustment layer, it is kind of giving me that rose gold style look to it. So that's how easily you can color it. So this is the hue saturation slider giving you just plain kind of colors and then in the curves you can get slightly different look to it depending upon what you like. And if you do not want to apply these hue saturation sliders and the curves you can simply go to this adjustment and apply a recolor and that can give you a simple one slider and you can simply recolor it according to your likeness whatever you feel like so if you want that you can easily do that too as well so guys that's how you can easily create these gold style or grid style textures inside affinity photo now if you have found this video to be helpful and interesting make sure that you like the video and let me know in the comments below as well because it will help me with the youtube algorithm and hopefully i'll see you in the next video and thank you for watching